friends, welcome to Storytime with the Conservancy. I am very excited to be your guest reader this week. I am a fourth grade teacher in South Los Angeles. My name is Miss Wood and I wanna say, hi room 27. Today we're going to read a book called Iggy Peck Architect, which is one of my favorites. So before we start reading this book, I want you to think about some things want you to think who or what is an architect and what does an architect do? Do you think you know? And can you think of other types of people who work together to help architects? And let's see, what is Iggy doing here in the on the cover of the book? What is he doing? Is that something that an architect does? Let's find out. Iggy Peck, Architect by Andrea Beatty. Young Iggy Peck was an architect and had been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious, Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past and she realized those diapers weren't clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting, it's nasty, it stinks. Have you built anything around your home with any materials that you could find? What did you build? And what did you use to build it? Hopefully they were clean materials. You don't really want any stinky structures, right? But Iggy was gone, he was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch out of pancakes and coconut pie. It's a lot of pancakes, huh? Dear Ig had it made until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. Hmm, how do you think that's going to make Iggy feel? And how do you think you would feel if you had something that you loved to do that was healthy and creative and fun? And then a grown-up said, uh-uh, you don't get to do that. How do you think you'd feel? That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she'd had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour of the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. She was found two days later in a stuck elevator, eating cheese with a French circus troupe. After that day, it's quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that above all one ought to avoid them, no ifs, ands, or buts. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear, <clears throat> he sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here, is that perfectly clear? Do you need to see Principal Howe? Oh, I think if you thought maybe Iggy would be very sad to hear that he couldn't build, you might have been right, look at him. <clears throat> no, ma'am, Iggy said. He lowered his head. 
and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. Now what do you think would happen if everybody who wanted to be an architect was told no? What would our environment be like? What would our, our neighborhoods look like? <clears throat> and our world would be much different, right? After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old-fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, oh last kids goodbye. Her eyeballs rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound. Luckily fainted, not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain of what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Pass was working together as one. So I notice here that Iggy has drawn something. Why do you think he has drawn something? How do you think that will help? And why do you think all the students are working together? How is that going to help? And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces. And on the far side, beaming with pride, were 17 smiling faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings through roll-ups and things, some of which should not, one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge, dangling from shoestring suspension. So Iggy built a bridge. How does this help his class? Why do you think he built a bridge? It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as they crossed the bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. What kind of structure here do we see on the last page? What kind of structure is that? It's a bridge just like Iggy built, but it looks a little different. Is he dreaming that maybe one day he can build something? Now every week at Blue River Creek Elementary in second grade, all the school kids can hear along with Miss Greer how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in a t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course he's the guy who builds towers from Pi, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. So now they get to talk about buildings a lot in her class, right? That's pretty cool. So I want you to think about the buildings in your neighborhood and what you notice about them. How do they look? Do they look similar to each other? Do they look different from each other? And if they look different or similar, why do you think that is? And as you're walking around, I've been taking a lot of walks lately because it's so nice to get outside when you're kind of stuck in the house a lot, right? And when I look around at all the buildings I can see, sometimes I've noticed buildings that I didn't see before. I didn't know the building was down the street. There's a giant building I never noticed before. So when you get out for a walk, it's pretty amazing. The things that you kind of don't see when you're caught up in your busy lives, right? So right now is a really good time to get out, take a walk with your family, look at the buildings around you, see what you notice about them. Can you tell if they're, if they're old or they're new? Can you tell if our architecture has changed from when it was older? So what I want to do right now is draw you a picture of a building that I see when I go on my walks pretty much every day when it's not raining. And um, I am not the greatest artist, but that's okay. I enjoy drawing and I try 
try my best and I do it anyway. Sometimes it doesn't turn out perfect, but I still am very proud of the things I do. So even if we feel like we're not very good at something, we should try, try to do it and do our best and be proud of what we can do, right? So I'm gonna start with a black marker. I've got a piece of paper up here. You can just use a regular piece of paper if that's what you have at home. Um, if you have a notebook, that's a really great tool to take on your walk with you so you can draw as you're looking at the building. Okay, that's a really great way. A lot of scientists use that, use a notebook to, to draw the things they see and make notes about the things they see. So let's start. I'm gonna make a giant rectangle because that is the basic shape of my building. And above my rectangle is just another smaller rectangle. Um, and then in there are going to be, what do you think? What do you think is in my, my building? Windows. They have lots of windows. My building has lots of windows. So they are square windows. All of my squares are perfect, but they're pretty much all the same shape, shape and size, right? One more row. And then up here, I also have windows that kind of come down the bottom, okay? So that's kind of the base the basic part of my building. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna get another color. My building is brown. So I'm gonna build, I'm gonna draw brown down here. I'm gonna color it, but not quite all the way, just to save a little time. So you get the idea that it's shaded in brown. And the color of my building here is actually kind of a beige color. I don't really have that marker, so I'm gonna leave it white. The next thing we have um, is a green part of my building a green part of my building. So there's one part that comes down here. Again, more windows. Can you hear the siren outside? More windows. And then there's another part down here. I'm going to color this part in right here. Like that. So kind of coming along nicely, right? I need one more part right here. I'm going to color that in as well. And then at the top of my building is where it starts to get pretty fun. It's a pretty fun building to look at. So I've kind of, let's see if you can guess this, this shape. I'm going to make it green. Let's see if you can guess what shape this is. I've got an angle in here, straight line here. Do you know what shape that is? It's a little crooked, but it is a trapezoid. So I have a trapezoid in my building. I'm going to color green. And then above that, have a regular rectangle and then above that it gets even taller if you can believe there's a part that goes like this and kind of has like um some pointy parts at the top and then inside in the room, inside here is a little sign with what um with the name of the building which i forgot to leave white for you so that's what my building looks like. Okay, a lot of shapes. Architecture um, has a lot of geometry in it, right? A lot of shapes. So I see this building a lot. I can see it out my window. I can see it from different angles. Um, it's a pretty cool building. So it might be fun for you to take a little walk, maybe take a notebook, or just try to use your memory and come home and draw the buildings that you've seen. If you see one that really stands out to you. Right? Have a great day.